This week on Christian World News, President Trump issues an ultimatum to Turkey. Release Pastor Brunson or suffer the consequences. And religious freedom fighter Mike Pompeo is the point man for the president on foreign affairs. See why this issue is near and dear to his heart. And standing up for Israel, how Nikki Haley is fighting for the Jewish state at the United Nations and why Christians have her full support. Hello everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Christian World News. I'm George Thomas, my colleague Wendy Griffith is on assignment. Hundreds of leaders from around the world came together to our nation's capital in Washington, D.C. this week. The Trump administration called them together to work towards ending religious persecution. During the summit, Vice President Mike Pence took a stand for an American pastor imprisoned in Turkey. My colleague Eric Rosales has the story. One by one, persecuted believers shared their stories at the first ever ministerial summit here at the State Department. But the first persecuted Christian couldn't share his story in person. That's because he's still imprisoned in China. Many people know my husband John is a pastor, living a simple life in pursuit of spreading the word of God. Jamie Powell, the wife of Pastor John Cho, says the Chinese government sees him as a criminal. Last year, Chinese border police arrested John for what she calls his faith-driven work, helping poor people. He's now serving a seven-year prison sentence. Since his detainment, my husband has suffered a rapid decline in his health. He has lost 50 pounds. He's not been able to communicate with me and my children. Prayer is the start, but as human beings, as we can see through a conference such as this, really having this open conversation and bringing awareness to these issues is the most important thing. Religious freedom really truly is for everyone. It's a right given by God. Former Kansas Governor Sam Brownback is America's ambassador at large for international religious freedom. He urged the representatives from 80 countries at this summit to help make the world a place where people genuinely care and love one another. Together, an alliance of government, civil society, and faith, we can and will advance religious freedom. Brownback cited the ethnic cleansing of Muslims in Myanmar and the Islamic State's genocide against Yazidis and Christians in Iraq. He also highlighted U.S. Pastor Andrew Brunson, who he says remains wrongly imprisoned on false charges in Turkey. Vice President Mike Pence echoed the demand at the first ever ministerial summit to advance religious freedom. To President Erdogan and the Turkish government, I have a message on behalf of the President of the United States of America. Release Pastor Andrew Brunson now or be prepared to face the consequences. President Trump spelled out the consequences in his recent tweet. The United States will impose large sanctions on Turkey for their long-term detainment of Pastor Andrew Brunson, a great Christian, family man, and wonderful human being. Turkish authorities arrested Brunson in 2016 on charges he helped plan a failed coup. The 50-year-old pastor faces up to 35 years in prison. <laughs> Wednesday, a court ordered Brunson taken from prison and placed on house arrest. The vice president says that's not good enough. Pastor Andrew Brunson is an innocent man. There is no credible evidence against him. I know that his faith will sustain him, but it shouldn't have to. Pastor Andrew Brunson deserves to be free. Pence told the leaders of more than 80 countries the list of religious freedom violators is long. China, Iraq, and North Korea top the list. And even though President Trump is seeking better relations with North Korea, the administration continues to press the issue of religious freedom. North Korea's persecution of Christians has no rival on the earth. It is unforgiving, systematic, unyielding, and often fatal. The mere possession of a Christian Bible is a capital offense. At the Holocaust Museum, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Nikki Haley spoke about the U.S.'s commitment to protecting religious liberty. We will continue to forcefully advocate for religious tolerance in the international arena, not just because so many people are being denied this right, but because defending religious freedom makes for a safer and more peaceful world for all of us. Secretary Pompeo says the ministerial summit will not be a one-time event, but an annual event under the Trump administration. 
Eric Rosales, CBN News, Washington. Thank you, Eric. Chris Mitchell is our CBN Middle East Bureau Chief. His home is normally in Jerusalem, but today he is here in our studios in Virginia Beach. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Great to be here, uh, I'm, cu I'm curious, Secretary of State Pompeo this week on Instagram um, made this message to Turkey's foreign minister. He said he underscored that it is well past time for this innocent pastor, Bran uh, Andrew Brunson, uh, to come home. Why is Turkey holding him? Well, there's a couple of reasons, uh, but first, George, I just wanted to comment on Eric's story. This is unprecedented for, for the administration to stand up, first of all, on behalf of religious freedom. They ha that hasn't been happening to the degree it has now. It's really unprecedented. Plus, the U.S. administration standing up on behalf of a Christian pastor in Turkey and making a state-to-state, -state, a nation-to-nation -nation, uh, situation. He's in prison because they consider him, actually, he's a political hostage because uh, Erdogan, President Erdogan of Turkey, wants his political adversary, who is mm -hmm. Fatullah Gulen, he accuses him of having a coup back in 2016. He wants the U.S. to extradite him, and he's using uh, Brunson as a sort of a political pawn uh, in the midst of this. Uh, we've noticed that in recent weeks that uh, uh, Turkey's President uh, Erdogan has uh, really turned anti-Israeli. In fact, right. he's, uh, he recently compared it to Nazi uh, Germany. Uh, what's behind this? Is, all, is this all about internal do uh, uh, domestic uh, issues or what? Uh, I think it goes deeper than that. Yeah. Uh, back in uh, the AKP party, which is his political party, really has increasingly turned Turkey from a Western-style democracy to an Islamist-style totalitarian mm. uh, government. And now we see recently, and he was elected president, with unprecedented powers right now. And so he has turned against Israel, partly because he's actually more uh, favors the Muslim Brotherhood. So he has really this message, this uh, relationship between Turkey and Israel has deteriorated for many, many years, and we're seeing more and more of that deterioration. Is there a sense in your mind that he is uh, attempting to be the voice for the Muslim ummah, the Muslim exactly, community, yeah. that he's positioning himself as a caliph. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. He wants to be the new caliph. Turkey used to be the head of the, uh, the caliphate uh, back in 1924. That was uh, abolished by President Ataturk back, yeah. uh, back in the early 1920s. He wants to restore that, that neo-Ottoman empire that one day ruled the Middle East and parts of Europe. And I think that's exactly what he wants to do. He wants to revive that Ottoman empire. And he sees himself as the head, the caliph yeah. of this new empire. Kamal Ataturk, the founder of the nation of Turkey, is probably rolling in his grave. He must be. Seeing what's now. happening. Chris Mitchell, it is a pleasure to have you. Come back anytime you want to. George, okay? great to be with you. All right, Will thank do. you, sir. All right, we have much more. Up next, we introduce you to the two most powerful players on the world stage to see how they're guided by their faith as they fight for freedom. Angels were created to serve God. These magnificent beings have awesome power beyond our comprehension. CBN presents Angels, Their Power, Purpose, and Presence. In Pat's latest DVD, you'll get the biblical insight into these mysterious spiritual creatures and discover the important role they play in God's kingdom and in your life. We're also going to meet real people who have come face to face with these divine creatures and have experienced what can only be described as miraculous, life-changing encounters. As he started pulling me through, it was just a burst of white light. My thought is the angels were there to hold me together. I knew that this was something that was happening and it was supernatural. Angels, their power, purpose, and presence. Call now or go to CBN.com to get your copy of Angels. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated. 
and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. And welcome back to Christian World News. As you saw in our first story, Secretary of State Pompeo hosted the first ever worldwide conference on religious freedom in Washington, D.C. this week. In his recent one-on-one -on -one interview with CBN's David Brody, Pompeo said his Christian faith explains why this issue is so important to him. Unfortunately, religious persecution is nothing new, and in recent years, it's grown. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo tells CBN News it's a major priority for this administration. The advancement of religious freedom matters to every individual in every country. Uh, the human dignity, the human right attached to religious freedom, I feel personally, I know President Trump does as well. The overall concept is to show evidence that greater religious freedom means less terrorism and a better economy. Experts say roughly three-fourths of the world's population face some restriction on religious freedom. As for Christians, one out of every 12 experience extreme persecution in the most dangerous countries on the State Department's worldwide watch list. Not every country will achieve the level of religious freedom that we have here in the United States, but we think we can advance it all across the world by bringing together folks from all faiths and frankly those who have no faith but their capacity to, to practice religion in the way that they choose is important for the world. For Pompeo, this is also personal because his evangelical Christian faith compels him to take action. Your faith, I know, is very, very important to you. You've talked about this in public before. So, so why, why, this seems, there's the public policy aspect, but it's also personal. Look, it's very consistent with what the Trump administration is, is trying to achieve with respect to religious freedom. Um, but it also fits with my worldview. Uh, I'm an evangelical Christian. Uh, I, I know that not everyone shares that faith, but it's important. It's important not only that Christians, but people of all faiths have the capacity to worship in the way that they desire. One of the biggest offenders is North Korea, and Pompeo already has his hands full there, negotiating with Kim Jong-un to get rid of his nuclear weapons. We need to see Chairman Kim do what he promised the world he would do. North Korea's human rights record is just as suspect as their inaction on nuclear weapons. The country ranks number one as the most dangerous country for Christians. While Secretary Pompeo wouldn't reveal his conversations with Kim, he did make one thing very clear in our interview. I want your viewers to know that the United States uh, rarely has an encounter uh, with a country uh, where we don't raise human rights concerns where they exist. We know the history there in North Korea. And the U.S. hopes to stop religious persecution and make a difference around the world. David Brody, CBN News, Washington. The Trump administration is not only fighting for persecuted believers around the globe, it's also standing strong for Israel, especially in the United Nations. David Brody, busy man that he is, also had this one-on-one -on -one interview with Nikki Haley, America's ambassador to the U.N. When it comes to supporting Israel, you're going to be hard pressed to find a bigger defender than Nikki Haley. Her passion was on display Monday evening in front of the influential evangelical group Christians United for Israel. Let me tell you, it's a new day at the UN. From now on, every country knows that the United States will not just block anti-Israel measures, we will shine a light on those who are responsible. There won't be any more free passes for those who bully Israel at the UN. Haley's time at the UN has been marked by a full throttle defense of Israel. In an interview with CBN News, she expressed excitement to see that the hard work is beginning to pay off as skeptical UN members begin to see the anti-Israel terrorist group Hamas for what it is. The idea that we could get the majority of the General Assembly for the first time to even acknowledge that Hamas is an issue was a fantastic win. Haley also sees a winning team in the support evangelicals have shown Israel for decades. When you look at the anti-Semitism, you look at all of the um, 
harassment that they're getting around the world, mm -hmm. you do feel for them because you know these are good people trying to live a good life that are in a dangerous region. And I think that Christians United, they see that for what it is. She's also calling out certain United Nations bodies and their questionable decisions. The Human Rights Council is a farce. She got the U.S. to pull out, calling it full of hypocrisy. What we've said is you've got serious human rights abuses, whether it's in Venezuela, whether it's in Iran, where they're protesting their regime, whether it's in Nicaragua, and they're doing nothing about it. The phrase doing nothing is not in Ambassador Haley's vocabulary. Since day one, you've gone in there to shake things up. Um, how tough has that been? Every day I put on body armor because I know there's going to be a fight. I'm just fighting a different thing every day. Often on that daily agenda, Iran, Russia, and dealing with North Korea. Do you think they understand the message that what denuclearization means to the United States? I think that North Korea understands the message. They just don't like to hear it. We're not going to loosen sanctions. We're not going to do congratulatory statements until we see actions to stand by their words that they're going to denuclearize. And I think they've got some soul searching to do. On the Russia front, she's OK with President Trump talking to Vladimir Putin, even in private, despite some of the criticism. He did that with Kim. He's done it with other leaders. He did it with President Xi of China. And that's just his way. He feels like he can get more out of them. Um, if he goes one on one like that, it's his style. It's the way he does it. You can't get to the end of the other side if you don't have those conversations. Despite the appearance of friendly talking with Russia, she makes one thing perfectly clear. We don't trust Russia. We don't trust Putin. We never will. They're never going to be our friend. That's just a fact. Iran fits that category as well, especially after its president, Hassan Rouhani, warns Americans that a war with Iran would be the mother of all wars. Iran has made or has received their legitimacy by rhetoric. It has the Europeans and everyone that was involved in the Iran deal scared of what they might do. We don't fall for that. The world is indeed a dangerous place and it has Nikki Haley keeping the faith. We just have to keep doing our part and we have to make sure that we're being true to ourselves, true to our values, true to what we believe in and not compromise on that. And I have faith it's all going to work out in the end. David Brody, CBN News, Washington. Coming up, it's the place where Christianity is going faster than anywhere else in the world. And its location may just surprise you. Parents, the Superbook Bible app is a great way to get your child reading the Bible because in today's busy world, we can use some help. The free Superbook Bible app has fun stuff your kids will love. They'll have a blast learning the Bible, playing great games, watching cool videos, discovering heroes in the Bible. They'll have fun while they learn God's Word. The Superbook Kids Bible app, available now. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. down and on fire. These people are trapped and we need the jaws of life. My feet were on fire. The car was filling up with smoke. There was fire coming in through my left door. The steering wheel was stuck in my chest. I couldn't move. The seat belt, I kept trying to release it, but it wouldn't release. And I just screamed, God, send your angels now. I saw a set of just white hands. It was just a burst of white light. 
Welcome back to Christian World News. Christianity is growing faster in Iran than anywhere else in the world. That's because tens of thousands are abandoning Islam. Not too long ago, I had the privilege to witness some of these new believers being baptized. On a recent Friday, 600 miles east of Tehran, not too far from the Afghanistan-Turkmenistan border, 20 Iranians prepared for a secret journey out of their country. For their safety, we've concealed their identities and changed their names. I've been waiting for this moment for nearly nine years. The mission took months to prepare. It was fraught with danger. This was my wish before I die. Afarin helped arrange their travel. The moment the Iranian government discovers someone has changed their religion, they will try everything to stop the person from sharing their new faith with others. Most of these new Christians paid a price for abandoning Islam. The government scares Christians, imprisons them, fires them from their jobs, kicks them out of school and many other tactics, all in an effort to stop them from evangelizing. Afarin knew what they were about to experience could land them in trouble. CBN News met them shortly after they left Iran. Due to the sensitive nature of this report, CBN News has agreed not to reveal our location nor the names of the individuals associated with the story. And this is why they left Iran for a few days. For the first time, all 20 followed Christ in baptism. Inside Iran, if the government found out that you were baptized, you would be automatic uh, imprisonment. And so rather than do that inside their country, they came outside for a special event like this. Men, women, and children, all of whom renounced Muhammad and professed their faith in Jesus Christ in a swimming pool rented for the occasion. Entire families got baptized. It feels very good. I'm very happy. My whole family is happy. And what makes this baptism all the more significant is that the majority of Iranians in attendance have come from the nation's third largest city of Mashhad, which also happens to be one of Shia Islam's most holiest cities. Ilahi, once a devout Muslim, said the Quran left her with more questions than answers. This was the appointed time for me to get baptized. Also, I know God used the past 11 years to grow my faith so I could endure difficult times. Experts say her testimony and that of many others points to evidence that God is advancing his kingdom in Iran. We had never seen such an unprecedented growth of an underground church anywhere else before. Mike Ansari, an Iranian by birth, is director of operations at Mohabbat TV. In 2006, it became the first 24-hour Farsi Christian channel to beam gospel programs into Iran. The majority baptized this weekend came to faith by watching Mohabbat TV. Some of these believers wait, waited for many, many years to be baptized. They want to tell the world that they belong to Jesus. They want to tell the world that what was before is dead, and now they're a new creation. Ansari says many Iranians, especially the young, feel disillusioned with Islam, and record numbers are turning to this channel to learn more about Christianity. Roughly about 16 million Iranians uh, within the last uh, 12 months have viewed one or, one, uh, or more of our programs on, on satellite TV and also on their, uh, on their mobile devices. That roughly uh, translates to about 20% of Iran's population. Uh, and that is an overwhelming number. Mohabbat is now one of four satellite channels broadcasting continuous Christian programming into Iran. Since we didn't know other believers or were part of a house church, there was nobody to help us grow in our faith. We could only grow through watching Mohabbat TV and with the Holy Spirit's help to get stronger in our faith. Nathan Rastampour led a house church in Iran for 10 years until he was forced to flee because of religious persecution. Now he hosts a show on Mohabbat TV, teaching folks how to safely run a house church inside Iran. God is using this house church show to, 
to sh not only share the gospel, but also to equip the house churches and make leaders. And those who track the growth of Christianity around the world say the one place where the faith is growing the most is in the Islamic Republic of Iran. Edward Hovsepian says this is nothing short of a miracle. His brother, Haik Hovsepian, an Assemblies of God pastor, was murdered in Iran for his faith in 1994. He says no matter how hard the government tries, it hasn't been able to stop the spread of Christianity. Ansari says these exclusive images should encourage Christians that God is moving on the hearts of Iranians. There is a lot of good news that is coming out of Iran, and we need to focus on that and celebrate that. We're hoping that the results that are being shared with the, with the church in the West would encourage the body of Christ in the Western world that uh, God is very much alive among Muslims and he's doing a great job. And you can see more amazing images of this baptism. Simply go to, Chris, to Christian World News webpage at cbnnews.com. We'll be back right after this. Hello? Is this thing on? Hey, kids, do you love games? And do you love discovering things? Yeah. Well, do you? Yeah. Then you're going to love this. It's the new free Superbook Kids Bible app. You can play games, watch videos, find answers to your questions, and a whole lot more. The new Superbook Kids Bible app. Free downloads available on iTunes and Google Play now. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. When you give, smiles grow bigger. When you care, homes are happier. When you comfort, the hurt goes away. When we all come together to love, miracles happen. And finally today, a special delivery at a Texas Chick-fil-A here in the United States got a lot of attention. A mother went into active labor and gave birth to her daughter in the bathroom at a Chick-fil-A in San Antonio. The couple had stopped at the restaurant to drop off their other children with friends while they were on the way to the hospital. After a successful delivery, Chick-fil-A gifted the baby girl free Chick-fil-A for life and guaranteed her a job when she turns 16. That's pretty cool. That is pretty awesome. Folks, that is it for this week's edition of Christian World News. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next week, goodbye and God bless you.